and tell you a joke. Is this on? <laughs> oh, we are. <laughs> cool. Just a name for it, but we're here to talk more about dispatching and the life of a dispatcher. And joining me today, it is a special treat. He just got married. He's on vacation, so he's got time to do this. Morgan, Morgan, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Pip. Appreciate it. It is a pleasure. We actually work together, right? We do. Well, before he got a five dollar <laughs> raise and became an equipment coordinator. We used to work together. We still work together. Okay, Just okay. A little further over right, in the room. That's right, and a little more money. But we are excited because I brought Morgan along today to answer some questions that you have asked since my last video recorded two years ago. Obviously, I'm very efficient <laughs> getting back to you. So I actually have had several questions. So are you ready, Morgan? I'll ask you a question. You can ask me a question. This is from James. He says, is a college degree required and any age, health, or background restrictions or requirements, and how do you get a job? Do you have to know somebody? That's a really good question. He says he's burnout. He's uh, in his uh, late 40s, early 50s, burnout in his career. What do you think? Do, do we need a college degree? We do not need a college degree. That's one of the beautiful things about dispatch. Um, there is an age requirement, but it's 23, so you're good there. And uh, the background restrictions. No, you just have to be able to read, write, and speak English. Really? That easy? Pretty simple. Pretty simple. Don't, uh, and I guess it helps if you know somebody in the industry. Yes. Um, but not necessarily required. No. Morgan and I had none of that, and we right. still got on board. So if you watch this video and see the two of us can get real jobs dispatching. Anybody can. Absolutely. <laughs> and I mean that in a good way. Yes. <laughs> All right. Next question. How's the salary scale? Entry level, uh, I think my first year of dispatching, full year I made uh, somewhere $35,000, dollars right around there, and that's working for a regional airline. However, if you can make it to one of the, uh, and this is speaking for the US, of course, I can't speak, we can't speak for Canada or anywhere else. You can make probably starting out like a American or Southwest, what, like 60, yeah, 60, 70, and then it just goes up from there. I love what I do. Do you love what you do? I do. Yeah. So it just depends where you work. Regionals are going to pay less than mainline, but that kind of gives you an idea. Yeah. Point there, counterpoint. Make sure you fly because we'll get a raise then. So, <laughs> and yeah, wouldn't help you, us out. Help us out. This, and it's not just us, it's flight attendants. Uh, it's pilots, it's everybody. It's never been safer, I would add, and a totally different subject, it's never been uh, safer to fly. Yeah. You know, but even with having to wear the masks and everything, which we actually have to do at work, uh, there's never been a better time, it's never been cheaper to travel. All right, next question. Is there an age cutoff? There is not. That's another one of the beautiful things about this fan. Yeah. Just, you, can, you can keep going to work as long as you can get up and go to work. There's no... No retirement age. That's true. There is no age cutoff. Uh, unlike pilots who have a cutoff, I don't know, what is it? Is it 65? Mm -hmm. I think it did get raised by a couple years. And first pilots who are watching, you can obviously answer that question better than us. Uh, but yeah, there's no there's no age requirement, and Morgan's right. Our next question How long is the training for flight dispatch? Oh, good question. That's a good question. Yeah. When I went to give you a little background, this was not on my radar. Uh, I had tried to get into the Air Force to be a pilot and they didn't want me because of medical reasons. So my friend suggested flight dispatching. So I actually went to a school here in Dallas, a specialty school, maybe you'd call it a trade school, uh, for flight dispatching. The, the federal requirement is about 200 hours of classroom time. Yeah. This is really the, the, the key component. And you have to pass an oral and a, a written exam as well. 
But that's really all it is. So I would save 200 hours in the oral and written exam. My school cost about $5,000. And, and I had went to a, uh, a technical school, like a college, so I have a, a degree for dispatch, so it took a little longer, but it's not required. Right. You just have to get the license. But you also know them a lot more. Maybe. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Next question, how much math is there involved? That's a good question and it's fairly minimal. It's not not a whole lot of math involved if you're uncomfortable with math. I would say, I guess you could do some quick math to do altitude deviations or, right. or temperature variations based on the altitude, but it's all fairly simple. We work with iPads and we... Uh, It'll help you yeah. do landing landing uh, distances and yep. all kinds of calculations. There's also a bunch of charts that you can follow. Next question. We're rolling along here. I'm a pilot and I have my commercial certificate Jealous. and planning to become a flight dispatcher. Do you think the knowledge that I have from my pilot certificate will help me to take the flight dispatch course? Ooh. Absolutely it yeah. will. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of the information is, is the same and all goes hand in hand. Yep. We're, Kind of like the pilots on the ground as dispatchers, so that'll that'll definitely transition very well into the dispatch. You have an advantage, I think, because a lot of the stuff you know in dealing with uh, charts, like Morgan said, uh, weather, and uh, also ATC mm -hmm. components. You know that you're aware of that. That definitely will help you get a leg up. And I know there are several actually pilots who are dispatchers. Yeah. I would like to ask about the future of this job. What do you think the future of being a dispatcher with the advancement of technology and some kind of software, uh, do you think there will still be a, a need for a dispatcher on the ground? That's a fantastic question and a difficult one. I hope, <laughs> I hope there's still a need for a dispatcher on the ground and I think that they will probably still want to have some kind of human interaction involved because uh, you never know with technology things can be mistakes and we are responsible for people's lives yeah. uh, so I would hope that that there is still a need for us in the future but I do think that the advancement of technology and software will just be there to help us make our decisions yeah. and make things run a little smoother when you look at uh, technology it can only help us but I it cannot uh, it can't replace the human to human interaction of a pilot right. and your quick thinking skills, like for example in an emergency. Yeah, or, or you know, uh, I don't know if they'll ever get to the point where, um, and, and it happens all the time, you can have a, a TAF for an airport yeah. that says it's supposed to be clear and beautiful and then you look at the radar and you can see weather moving in and it's reporting nothing. I don't know if they'll ever get a software that'll be able to interpret what's not being reported in the forecast yep. that's showing on your on your radar and be able to to make those decisions. So I, I think there will always be a need for a dispenser. <laughs> Final question. question, yeah. What is your advice for someone who doesn't have aviation background but wants to become a flight dispenser? Well, for example, I had zero knowledge Same. other than playing flight simulator. By the way, little plug for Flight Simulator, feel free to line my pockets. Coming out August 18th, you're welcome. <laughs> so yes. But yes, you don't need any kind of aviation background. Yeah. background. I had none. Happened to just stumble into the field. Originally, I'd actually uh, heard about ATC and was interested in that. And when I went to talk to the advisor at the school, he suggested I look into dispatch as well. So I did a double with ATC and dispatch, and, and the more and more I learned about dispatch, the, the more excited I became about it and hit the ground running and never looked back. I actually was working at Chick-fil-A because uh, a couple months before I took the LSAT, bombed that, took the GRE, did well on that, but couldn't figure out what I wanted to do. So yeah, I had zero experience. In fact, Flight Simulator was my only training, and I, uh, other than that, got interested in flight dispatching. Like my captain friend said, go check it out. And yeah, three years, three, can't believe it's three years later. Kind of flies. Yeah, and here we are, uh, official dispatchers, and uh, doing all right. We work all shifts 24 hours a day. There's always somebody in the office. So we are kind of the captain's partner on the ground 
keep track of them once they're en route. We help them coordinate if there's an emergency or if they need to declare an emergency or if there's a patient who's sick on the plane. Right. Watching the weather, watching yep. the fuel, uh, staying in contact with ATC if they have any kind of programs or initiatives going on for uh, you know high volume or, or weather closures. ATC, uh, the captain, and the dispatcher, they all kind of work together to make sure that you get to your destination safely and as quickly as, possible. Yeah, as, quickly, efficiently, and safely as possible. Safely as possible. So Morgan, thanks for, for joining me this week. Thanks for having me. It's, yeah, it was a pleasure. It, it was a pleasure. It's been two years. Hopefully we'll make more videos. But in the meantime, if nothing else, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know we're out. <laughs>